I've got eight random questions. You get three rolls on the tower and whatever I roll for you. That's where we start at least. What is the most recent TV show that you have binge watched? Yellow Jackets. I went in and like did so the I wanted to know the theories. I went into like chat rooms. I did I did the whole thing. All right, now I have to ask you two follow-up questions. First, who is your favorite Yellow Jacket? I mean, I think for personal reasons, I'm going to say Lottie. I mean, she killed a bear. Why? We don't know. All right, second question. You said you go into theories. What's your your favorite theory thus far that you hope pans out? I think my favorite theory is that Misty might have killed Travis. I think she's like done something. I think she's done some killing. We don't know yet how, but but I think that she's up to no good. And I also don't think they eat um if you could learn a new skill or about a different profession through a role, what would you choose and why? I think I'd really want to learn how to be a, like a CIA agent <laughs> or like a detective or something that has to do with, I'm really into puzzles, um, escape rooms, true crime. I'm like really into figuring things out like that. And so I've always really wanted to like follow a CIA yeah, I would, they would never let me, but but maybe even like a detective or something like that on like a really crazy case, because I would want to crack it. <laughs> now I also want to cast you in Escape Room 3, and I need to ask you if you're playing Wordle. No, what is Wordle? What? <laughs> you don't know what Wordle is? It's this game where you have to guess a five letter word and you only get one per day. And it tells you when you guess a word, which letters are the correct letters in the word. And it tells you if they're in the correct position and you need to like use the clues to figure out what the word of the day is. Ooh, okay. I like when there's clues. High, low. Can you give us one audition high and one audition low and then maybe what you learned from that low? How much time do you have? I have so many low stories about auditions. Um, I'm a really bad auditioner. And um, it's just such an unnatural process to have just one chance to, and your adrenaline kicks in and and then I start like psychoanalyzing, you know, things. And um, there was one time that I that I tried out for, for something, and this was a, a long time ago, but um, I, I ended up doing the scene and I kind of like butchered it. Um, and then I tried to do it again and the director said, okay, that one wasn't bad. And I said, so the other one was? And he was like, it wasn't great. And so then I just said, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to leave the room. So um, I just, I ended up just leaving. He said it in like a, in a funny way, but um, it was, it was a pretty, pretty uh, sad, sad day for me to be excused, you know, from the room. But um, I think the, an audition high, um, my audition for American Dreams when I was 15 years old, I ended up auditioning for it and getting it in the room. And that never happens. Um, they told me I got the job at the end of my read. And I keep waiting for that to happen to me again. <laughs> and it's it'll probably never happen again, but it, that was definitely, um, something I'll always remember as a, as a kid. And I guess what I've learned from both of them is um, don't have too much coffee before an audition. I have a round of would you rather for you. They are all filmmaking related would you rathers. Would you rather have to fake sneeze or fake vomit in a scene? Ooh, um, I think I'd rather fake sneeze, of course. Um, I don't know, I, I've never had to fake sneeze or fake vomit, really, luckily. And I've never thought about that question. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Here's another uh, fake activity question. Would you rather have to fake wake up in a scene or fake drive in a scene? I just did a movie um, a couple of months, or a couple of months ago in, in um, Utah, and it's a Vince Vaughn movie, and he, I had to wake up in this scene, and he was like, you know, the thing, I can't do a Vince Vaughn impression, but just imagine that I can. But he was like trying to teach me how to wake up accurately. And I realized when he was trying to tell me that, that maybe I've never known. I wake up all the time in movies and I guess I don't know how. So now I'm kind of 
in my head about it. I guess Vince Vaughn didn't think that I woke up well. So um, I think I'm going to fake drive. <laughs> I think about that often. It's always, uh, it's like the simplest daily activities that I feel like are the most difficult to, to you know, imitate realistically. Definitely. I always, I always, um, in movies can tell when people aren't fake driving well though. You can, I mean, everyone really can. It's like when they're just doing that and they're not moving it. <laughs> Would you rather play the killer in a slasher movie or get a really gnarly death scene? Oh, I would so much rather be the killer. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to play a killer in a movie. That's a goal of mine for sure. Hello everyone, welcome back to Collider Ladies Night. I'm very excited about this episode because I'm a big fan, fan of Britney Snow and also I love your new movie, X. Uh, any Ty West movie, sign me up. So you pick the right ones to work with there. Definitely. I mean, he's a master at this and I was really excited to work with him. So it was a good choice. It is one thing to say, I want to be an actor, but it's another to, I guess, really feel like, like you're doing it and you have a chance to go the distance. So I know it's never easy in this industry, but was there any early project that kind of, I don't know, I guess significantly contributed to giving you some confidence in yourself, something that made you say like, I'm here and I'm really doing it now? I think being on American Dreams was, I was 15 when I got that. And um, I think I was, I was in a zone then that I felt really good about. And I pretty much started doing movies around that time. And um, I also feel like Hairspray was, was sort of that moment for me too, where I was with people that I regarded as icons and I felt connected to the environment. And I felt like I hopefully deserved to be there. And that was, I was only 21. So I felt, um, yeah, I felt like I was in the right place at the right time. One, two, uh. what was that? I don't know. I've never made that sound before. That movie is something special and clearly sparked something special as it evolved into a franchise that is very beloved. So was there a particular moment on the set of the very first Pitch Perfect movie where you just kind of stopped and said to yourself, like, I can feel it. We have something special here that's unlike anything else I've done before or anything else out there for that matter. Definitely. I, I remember feeling that when I read the script, actually, I... I remember reading it and actually audibly laughing out loud, which is the marking of a really good script because usually, you know, you tuck, chuckle or something, but, but when I'm laughing, um, I, I really wanted to do it. I, I was the last person cast and I was like writing letters and I was calling people and I was just, I was so, I was like, I'll play any part. I'll do anything. Um, and I, I think because I was so invested I knew in my heart that it was going to be something special because it was really smart. But then when we were on set and everyone fit their roles so well and we all just really gelled together and were very connected to the people that we played um, in terms of almost, there was a lot of uh, overlap. I think, um, I think I did know that it was going to be something really special. And that was my first thing back after taking a long time off really of acting. And so um, I was just grateful to be there. I mean, every morning I was just like, just grateful and excited to, to be a part of it. Do you mind me asking why you felt the need to take that time off and then what you gained from that period of time away from the industry? Sure, yeah, I, I took a year off from 23 to 24 and then I did this show called Harry's Law, but then, um, I ended up that that was kind of a, a a strange show for me. Unfortunately, my fault. And um, I think that I was I was just coming back from that year long break, and I felt like I needed to take that time because I grew up as a kid actor. My mom started me when I was a baby, and I never even knew what I liked, or I never knew how to take care of normal twenty three year old things, and um, I, I needed to just put myself first and it was a really informative year and, um, and something that I was, it was really helpful for my health. And so then coming back, it was like relearning how to be an actor again. And I was just so grateful that I, that I got pitch perfect because it was the perfect thing 
to make me fall in love with acting again. All right, let's get into X here, which I'm very excited about. So the script for X comes your way. Was there anything about the project that made you think this would be a really good thing for me to do right now in particular? You know, an itch to jump back into the genre, something it would let you try for the first time that you think think you needed, anything like that? Definitely all of those things. I think the script came at a perfect time for me. I was itching to work because it was COVID and um, and we were kind of in this place of needing to have an escape, needing to have fun, needing to feel connected to something that was exciting. And so I got the script. It was A24, it was Ty West, it was Braun. And I knew that the the material was going to be elevated in a way where it wasn't going to be just a horror film. It was going to be something that was a that was going to be taken, you know, with with serious hands. And so um I I also was a little intimidated because the whole movie was about sex and this character was so confident. And at the same time, there was this kind of feeling that I had where I I needed to do that for me. And I was really proud of myself that I, that I could do it. And so, yeah, it came at the perfect time and I'm really glad that I, I did it. I don't think we talk about this nearly enough. When you are making a movie about making an adult film, what is something that Ty or someone else on set can do for you that makes you feel safe and comfortable in that kind of environment, working with that kind of material? I think I felt safe because there was so much consideration and care about every single shot in that movie. Nothing was shown that wasn't talked about at length beforehand nothing was off the cuff. Um, Everything was very, very methodical in terms of why we were showing this, how we were going to film it. There was an intimacy coordinator on set, Tandy Wright, who we worked really closely with, who was a angel and made sure that everything was based in character and not gratuitous sort of shock and awe. And, um, I think that was necessary for me to do it, to, to do the movie. And Ty was really at the forefront of making sure that all the, everyone, even the, the females and, and men in the movie felt comfortable. I also love hearing about the value of a good scene partner. So was there ever a time on X where a scene partner helped you access something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to get to without them? Oh, definitely. I, I mean, I have to, to, you know, give a shout out to Scott for being the best on-screen boyfriend because those scenes were hard and we were in compromising situations and um, without him being so uh, gracious and and such a gentleman and making sure I was comfortable at every point, um, I couldn't feel as confident as I could to be Bobby Lynn. And um, we both just had fun. I mean, we were laughing the whole time. It's it's absurd what we're doing in this movie. We look absurd. And so I think that having that sort of person to kind of check ourselves of, of, of not taking ourselves too seriously was um, really important for me. Not to turn this into a review of the movie, but I understand some of it's heightened. But I think one of the things that shocked me about X the most is like the truth and the thematic resonance in it. I guess I didn't I didn't really expect to go into a movie that had so much to say about aging where it like it kept me up at night and it made me consider things that I wouldn't have considered if I hadn't seen this wild Ty West movie. Mm-hmm. That was one of my first conversations with Ty. I think our first um call I said, "So, you did a movie about the fear of getting older." I feel that. You know, I think everyone feels that. I have I have aging parents and I'm getting older, you know, and there is always that fear of like, am I doing enough? Am I living my life to its fullest potential? And, um, and I think the juxtaposition of these two groups of people, one at the beginning, one at the end and how that collides, I think is something that nobody's done in a horror movie before. All right, I'm going to put up the spoiler warning now, even though I don't think this is being treated like a spoiler, but I wanted to reverse the scene partner question because I can't imagine what it must be like for Mia having to do that performance with all that prosthetic work. So for you as her scene partner, is there anything that you were able to do for her to make it easier when she was kind of carrying that around all day? I, not, I mean, I, I don't want to get into Mia's process because that's her 
her own process and, and something that I greatly respected. But I, but I think we all kind of just instinctually knew that we couldn't talk to Mia. Like, not that we couldn't, but just that we weren't going to talk to Mia because we couldn't even see her within that makeup. We It didn't even look like our friend. So I think all of us kind of made sure that we treated Mia like an old woman. I mean, we like pulled out chairs for her. We like made sure she was okay. Like it, we started to actually like, it started to really trick our minds because we started treating her like a 90 year old woman. And we would, we completely forgot that Mia was probably fine. You know, you should be very proud of X and a lot of the things that you've accomplished over the course of your career. Thank you so much for revisiting some of it with us on ladies night. It's much appreciated. Thank you for having me. This was fun. 